Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. This is Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. Hey, do me a favor, share this video, and when you do, I will promote your favorite charity on my uh, site. I also want to go ahead real quick and give a, uh, unfortunately, a very sad note to Mr. Howard D. Howell. Howell. He is H-O-W-E-L-L. -L. He is the father of uh, William Howell who is the owner of The Happy Puppy, who was uh, The Correct View's first ever advertiser. He passed away at the age of 68, so I'd like to go ahead and uh, definitely express our condolences to the Howe family and uh, any of you that are looking to, uh, to drop any words of uh, support that is being done for the funeral or the calling hours, Reed's Funeral Home will be handling the calling hours. All right, everyone! Fukushima Diary has dreadful news. It is the two-year anniversary of the Fukushima disaster. Well, actually, it was the 11th. Um, this, is a, this is a big deal because um, remember people were using it as a yardstick that within so many years of an atomic blast, this many people get cancer. And it's, you know, decades go by. Well, if that is any indication to how bad... Um, the nuclear the nuclear uh, war, so to speak, that ended World War II. If that's any indication, um, it's already been stated by some people that um, the, in terms of the total amount of radiation, I don't mean blast destruction, that it would have been better if Fukushima, if Japan had been attacked uh, by a nuclear war than it would have um, if if this had happened, which did in Fukushima two years ago, happen to such a degree that we will never be able to clean it up. The reason I'm mentioning this is because already we are having children who have thyroid cancer as a result of Fukushima. Now, if they have thyroid cancer, and we are now two years into it, then what that means is that they develop the cancer, obviously, sooner so within a year and a half to a year and nine months, we are seeing cancers in the people at Fukushima. Will my American friends in Hawaii please listen to me and stop living in Hawaii, stop eating the local food, stop eating tuna, stop eating anything that comes out of the Pacific Ocean. If you live on the west coast of California, Oregon, or Alaska, you are going to die. It is not a joke. These people already over there in Japan, listen to this. Two more Fukushima, uh, on 2 13 2013 Now, if I read this uh, clumsily, sometimes the, uh, anytime you take one language and put it into a receptacle language, sometimes words don't always match. So, we've, I've had people say, learn to read. And I'm reading it like it's written. Two more Fukushima children were diagnosed with thyroid cancer, and seven more Fukushima children are suspected to have thyroid cancer as well. These are thyroid cancer for 80% of possibility. On the radio show, journalist comedian Oshidori commented the seven Fukushima children are going to have thyroid surgery so they can know if it was cancer. About the thyroid test of Fukushima children, they are going to surgery to analyze the cells and determine if it was cancer or not. It was not that easy for the child to have surgery. Osidori, 10 Fukushima children are suspected to have malignant tumors. Three children had surgery and they were malignant. Seven children hadn't had surgery, <clears throat> but they would be malignant for 80% of them. And shockingly, they are going to have surgery as well. Well, I don't know about you, but for you <clears throat> Top 40 fans, for you Kesha fans, 80% means 8 out of 10. Now, you mean to tell me that it's going to dissipate and it's going to thin out by the time that it gets to uh, America. I mean, Hawaii is America, and California is America. What, it's going to, it's going to dissipate to what? To what, 40%? So four out of 10 people? 
I gotta get, is that, is that the dissipation that everybody on the West Coast is saying that it's still okay for them to grow food that they send to us? No, if you eat anything from California, it's a death sentence. Or you got maybe a 40% chance. It's an 80% chance there. This is a mess. And I'm not, I'm not saying 80% of the population, but I'm saying the thyroid growths are proving to be 80% of the time cancerous. It's a big deal. Happy anniversary, Fukushima. Don't ever forget what General Electric did to us. Don't ever, ever forget what GE did to us. They bring good things to life. My ass! If you are part of a mutual fund and they are in it, you are part of the problem. Do not buy anything GE unless you buy it used. Of course, all things secondhand, they don't get money for it. They only get money from the initial sale. Never buy anything new GE. Never invest in GE. Never support them because they are going to be why a lot of you listening to me are going to be in cancer surgeries or your children are or both. Um, this is from PrisonPlanet.com. This is wonderful news. After the Fukushima thing, this is wonderful news. And for those of you that don't like that, we have horrible news coming next. Um, there, blueberries and strawberries cut a heart attack risk in half by a third. <laughs> cut heart attack risk by a third. <laughs> the older study I'd seen, <laughs> the older study I'd seen said that it was a half, that, that a half a number of years ago. It's not. It's now by a third. Listen to this. There have been countless studies done to confirm that berries, including the most popular berries in America, blueberries and strawberries, truly are superfoods. Researchers from the Harvard School of Public Health and the University of East Anglia found that women cut their risk of heart attack by one-third simply by eating blueberries or strawberries three times a week. And, of course, the behind-the-scenes Queen Cristal, you can't get one blueberry down her throat because she's too busy drinking two liters. But those berries are loaded with dietary anthos anthocyanins and powerful dietary flavoids that help keep plaque off of arteries and provide other cardiovascular benefits. Berries are full of flavor and health-promoting properties. Excellent news. That couldn't be better news if, unless it was chocolate. I mean, it really is, and this is very important. I like this here. Prevention is the best medicine. There is no doubt that prevention is the best medicine. Making even one simple dietary change, like eating more foods in anthocyanins, grapes, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, and eggplant, can even keep cardiovascular disease at bay. Berries are easy to incorporate into our healthy diet and should be eaten at least three times a week for best results. Uh, mentions putting them on your cereal or in your smoothie. I'm sure you can figure out how to eat berries without me telling you. The point is, it's wonderful news, wonderful news. And while you're at the grocery store, let me give you some not-so-wonderful news, as promised. Natural News, Mike Adams, grocery loyalty card purchases surveyed by insurance companies to raise rates and deny claims. This is the show where everything Christelle loves, just, she's going to hang herself when she hears this. Keep, keep sharp objects away from my girlfriend. Because she signs up for all of these and she puts her real name down. Now I know the argument in the article is to not use your real name on these, which is sometimes an option, but in some instances, especially as it happens more and more, you're going to go ahead and find out that you won't be able to redeem them without showing your license, so that could be a problem. Um, me, I, I never sign up for them because I never remember to use them when I do. Uh, I used to when I drove cab briefly. Uh, they, I, because I fueled up so much, I used the points to pretty much pay for an entire little mini tour that our band took down to West Virginia. Uh, I warned natural news readers about this years ago. Those grocery store loyalty cards and that they push on you to enjoy discounts on groceries are actually a behavior surveillance technology that's used to capture and profile your grocery purchasing patterns. This data is then sold off to insurance companies who use it to raise your rates by linking your grocery purchases with your risk of disease. And data mining is easy. I can go on my computer and I can figure out how many people listen to the correct views. And I don't do this, by the way, nor would I ever. 
take all the inf personal information I could get about people that follow the, these kinds of politics and then try to sell them things like uh, memberships to this group and organization or this. Yeah, I'm not going to send you any of that BS. But for those of you that know what I'm talking about, that's, that don't know what I'm talking about, that's how it's done. They, they buy the information from the convenience stores and then they use it against the people that are getting insurance. Um, it's pretty much the way it's done. Buying a lot of ice cream, it says, then you are likely to be obese and diabetic. Purchasing a lot of processed meats and homogenized milk, eh? You're more likely to develop cardiovascular disease. Bringing home a lot of processed food without it its chemical sweeteners or chemical preservatives, you're far more likely to get cancer. All of that is true, by the way. But at what point are we allowed some privacy? That's the question. Health insurance companies are now using this data to help develop these sorts of risk profiles of individual consumers. And it's all enabled because people are so incredibly obedient that they actually fill out their real names and addresses on these grocery store loyalty cards. And sometimes they have to. Health insurance companies simply use credit reporting databases to link your grocery loyalty card number to your health insurance account number. And from there, your insurance rates can be adjusted based on what you buy to what you eat. Of course, you know, Jim Smith could be in trouble. You know, there's only one of him. Even worse, they can use this data to deny your health insurance claims. For example, if you get diagnosed with cancer, your health insurance company can look through your grocery purchasing history in the wonderful land of the free and show that you, brought, you bought processed meat products containing cancer-causing sodium nitrate. And that is completely true, by the way. They can use this data to deny payment on your claims and push you and push the blame onto you for living a cancer lifestyle. The people call these kinds of things conspiracy theories, but it, I don't have an associate's degree in IMT, and I can tell you that this information is so easy to put together and so easy to get that I can practically, I, I can, I can program a, 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 uh, a computer program that will do this. I can do it in a language called JavaScript. Um, and off I go. I, you know, it's very easy. So it's cheaper for the insurance companies to do this. Calling it a conspiracy theory is just admitting that you don't know anything about computers. Because if you do, you'd realize that this is incredibly easy to do and it doesn't take any great conspiracy, conspiracy for it. Um, this was good, though. This is very good. Some of the, the names he says uh, that they like to do. Some of the names he uses, such as Chris P. Bacon. <laughs> this is great. Oliver Klausoff. Haywood Jablomi. Paul McGroin. Pat McGroin, uh, for members of the TSA. And Jack Hoff, H-O-F-F. Um, basically, he's saying to go ahead and lie on the card about what your name is, which I agree completely. Absolutely, in total, do it. And if they make you show your ID, don't get the card because they're going to hold everything against you. When people like myself or Alex Jones, it says, first warn you about what's coming, you are called conspiracy theorist and told that whatever we're talking about doesn't exist. Later, once it becomes obvious that the thing that we were talking about does in fact exist, the accusation changes to, well, you should like it. And this will make us healthier. Well, for those of you, go to the mediaspeaks.com, uh, Sam DeGangi. Look up the article that I wrote about how it's, it's called Being Libertarian Even When It Hurts. And talks about how the New York City soda ban, bomb, can't do it. Bloomberg finally lost one. Thank God. And if you guys put him on the Republican ticket, I swear to God, there isn't a chance whatsoever that I will do anything in any way, shape, matter, or form to help the Republican Party ever again. And you know what? If he was to be put on the Democratic ticket, I would never vote for him. If he was the last man on earth, and I would do everything that I could possibly good, could do to eliminate his chances of winning, and I don't mean violently, I mean politically, don't be stupid. If he ran as a libertarian... I would betray my own party. That's what a terrible, terrible person Bloomberg is. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to get on to this. Isn't it interesting when every single time they come up with something here that has to do with proving that we've been here, man mankind, I mean, has been here longer, or something has been here much longer
than we think. It's always, it's always buried into our, oh, you know, it couldn't be the case. I say this because this is from the voice of Russia. 300 million year old UFO tooth wheel found in Russian city of Vlad Ivistok. I'm so good with foreign languages. V L A D I V O S T O K. Now I'm going to read a little bit of this because I think it's really interesting. And for those of you that know how I like to end the show, you know that some of these things are news you won't get anywhere else. And that might be why you're here. Thank you. Lighting the fire during a Cold War winter evening, a resident of Vladivostok found a nail-shaped metal detail which was pressed in one of the pieces of coal that the man used to heat his home. Mesmerized by this discovery, the responsible citizen decided to seek help from the scientist in Primorye region. After the metal object was studied by the leading experts, the man was shocked to learn the assumed age of the discovery. The metal detail, it says, was supposedly 300 million years old, and yet the scientists suggest that it was not created by nature, but rather manufactured by someone. The question of who might have made an aluminum gear in the dawn of time remains unanswered. Well, you know... The, you know what else remains unanswered is that the, the crap pots that believe that they had electricity in ancient Egypt. They're crazy, right? People have demonstrated how they used water to make their electricity. And you can prove this, among other things, in the fact that what were supposed to be torch stands, there was no... Oh, what's a good example? If you stick a torch in right here, you're going to have black soot above it. If you stick an electrical light in there, you won't. And do you know why? Because there's no soot generation, which is exactly what they find in the pyramids. Um, so they try to bury these things every time some kind of uh, proof comes along that we were either visited by something were we uh, my guess is that we were but i don't believe that we were because to, and that, that implies knowing it who knows such a thing but my guess is more than likely anytime something comes to prove that then they try to shoot it down the metal detail which was recently found by the Vlad Vistok resident is yet another discovery which perplexed scientists. The coal in which the metal object was pressed was delivered to Primor from Chernogordysky mines in Kakashia region. Knowing that the coal deposits of this region date 300 million years back, Russian experts inferred that the metal detail found in these deposits must be an age mate of the coal. All right, there you go. I mean, and then you'll find you'll never see anything about this again because it doesn't fit into the paradigm that they want you to believe. And that is that, at the very least, man has been here much longer than they want to say that he was. He was very likely here with the dinosaurs, even though we're supposed to believe that they weren't. Um, you're not supposed to believe anything in the Bible, like Jonah and the whale, even though we have found a people that have been in the stomach of whales, and you can tell by looking at how they died that they lived in there for a couple of days. Um, you're not supposed to ever hear any of that. And for those of you that say that the world was created in three days, well, that would be a little bit difficult to do without the sun, because you can't measure the day. I believe that he was speaking in days, as in if someone is in their last day, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to die today. You're speaking about the end of their life. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views. Please donate to the show if you can, because all money that you give to the show goes right back into it. Um, make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up the articles. D. Lake, Kyle, Court, and myself are always posting articles and videos. And um, we are on the forefront of the alternative media, so please do me a favor and support us. Good night, friends. God bless.